Demo time, demo time. Oh, hello everybody and welcome once again to Citanium Mine. And I am excited because on this episode, I get to talk to you about some demos that I played. That's right, it's a demo roundup. Yeehaw! On this one, we're actually going to talk about four different games, and I'm going to give you some just early impressions having played the demos. And these four games are Little Kitty Big City, Above Snakes, Death Must Die, and Paleo Pines. Are they any good? Well, you'd have to actually listen to the rest of the episode, which is what you're totally going to do, right? Yes. Yes, it is. So let's start with something a little lighthearted. Little Kitty Big City. It's not a very long demo, mind you, probably about a half hour, but it gives you an idea of some of the basic mechanics of the game, where you play a cat. A cat that has fallen out of its apartment and is now on the mean streets of uh, an undisclosed city. And now you have to figure out how to get back. The idea behind this is to create sort of an open world where you can explore around, tool in a kind of larger sandbox, but you're a cat. And so you want to climb up onto dumpsters, climb along railings, and also create general mayhem. One of the first things that they teach you to do in the game is to uh, bat vases off of shelves. If you're thinking that this might seem a little bit like cat lateral damage, you're right. It, it is that, although it's in third person. Our third kitty, perhaps, if we're going there. And uh, you get to interact with a whole bunch of different characters. And there's also no time limits in this game. You get to find out about this little tanuki uh, that's uh, looking for collectibles. You get to uh, learn how to catch birds using bread. How do you get bread? Oh, it's easy. You swipe at some dude that has a sandwich in his hand, and then the sandwich falls down, and then you can use the bread, and you can lure a bird in, and then you can pounce on the bird, and then you can get some feathers off of the bird before it flies away. Uh, the bigger cat that's there explains, yes, this is a catch-and-release uh, <laughs> hunting ground only. Uh, you don't actually, like, kill the birds or anything. Uh, but uh, then you start to realize that there is almost a Dark Souls quality to this. There are certain entries that you can't get through from one direction. You have to be around the other side, move boxes out of the way to create shortcuts. And there's also this idea that you can't go into water. Water bad. So when you see water spills, it's essentially telling you, nope, you can't go over there. You have to find another way around. The uh, the fun of the game is just, you know, moving around real stealthily in, like, a, a third-person action game where you're a cat. I actually haven't played Stray, but I imagine that this is Stray-adjacent in terms of its look and feel. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. I thought that the game looked really nice, had a neat sense of humor to it, and has a lot of potential. Uh, don't know if I would pick up the full game but I definitely wanted to put it onto a watch list be so that I knew when it was coming out. So Above Snakes. Yeah, Above Snakes is a game that's sort of like, I guess, a farming sim and a crafting survival kind of game uh, where you're playing uh, a native woman, Ayana, who is out on the frontier lands and has heard rumors about a nearby town that has fallen under a mysterious toxin and that has turned all the townspeople there into ostensibly zombies. And you get a first-hand account of this very early on in the demo, uh, where you encounter one of them. But the main thing that you're supposed to do in this game is to build some crafting stations, learn how to hunt, learn how to fish, learn how to forage, and eventually scout beyond the first area that you go to. What I found really interesting about the structure of the game is how the game world expands. It's not just this giant open world that you just travel through. You build the world as you go. When you do enough stuff in the game, you unlock the ability to put down another tile. This is kind of Carcassonne, but as a game that's also like a survival crafting game. Sounds interesting, right? It is, because 
you learn how to craft different landscapes as time goes on. So you start off with your meadows, and then you eventually learn how to build forests, and you learn how to build lakes, and you learn how to build plains, and there's different things in all of those. And as you build those, you unlock special tiles that also inform the rest of the game. Here's the nearby caravan, and now that you've learned how to make forests, you can attach this special block on, and now plop down into the map that you're building, this tile-based map that you're building, is this encampment, and there's people there that you can interact with. Oh, we need to find this overturned supply wagon. Well, we don't know where that is. Well, good news, once you unlock how to make the planes, you can get access to a special tile, and the special tile is that caravan piece, and then you place it into the world on a planes piece so that it matches side to side. That's a really interesting way of designing a game where you're essentially building the landscape out as you go, which also increases the number of things that you can do. You know, you can get lumber from, you know, taking down the trees, uh, but you can also get, you know, berries when you get into fields because there's more blueberries there. You can learn how to fish when you learn how to fish. Obviously, the lakes are going to be the place you want to go for that, and then you can go back and cook them at your homestead. Uh, so there's a storyline. Uh, there are hunger and uh, thirst meters and exhaustion meters and all of the stuff that you expect from like a survival game, crafting stations and the ability to craft more advanced stuff as time goes on when you get more advanced product. Uh, but the really big mechanic that I took away from it that I thought was very interesting was the idea of being able to build tile by tile the world around you. And what I was very interested in, if I do pick up the full game, was if we get into the part where you actually get to the town itself, where the infection is. Because you'll notice these roaming zombies essentially coming to attack you out in the woods. But... I'd be interested to see, and I'm, I imagine you get to the point where you actually go to the town and then build the town out itself. That's That would be really neat. I, I'm practically sure they must do it. But the very layout of the game, really interesting. Really interesting. Different from most of the survival crafting games that I've played for that specific reason alone. Death Must Die is a game that will remind you of Hades. Well, no, it will probably remind you of Vampire Survivors. Well, no, it's probably going to remind you of both. In Death Must Die, you take your little avatar, you go to this temple, and they tell you, Hey, so here's the thing. You're the Chosen, and you have to destroy death. Now, when you get into this arena... You get these just hordes of creatures coming at you, which is going to remind you a lot of Vampire Survivors. The difference is that in Vampire Survivors, you just have auto attacks. Uh, and in this one, you have to actually launch specific attacks. And you get new abilities as time goes on, and then you can utilize your attacks and put them in different directions. Uh, more like a bullet hell shooter. Of sorts, And so the combat is going to feel a little closer to something like maybe a Hades, because you also, in similar fashion to Hades, uh, will level up. And as you level up, you get these boons from the gods, the god of fire, uh, the god of war, the daughter of death, the fates. They come in and they just give you... A new boon, either to upgrade one of your existing abilities or to give you a brand new ability that adds to your repertoire. Some that are auto cast around you, very similar to Vampire Survivors, some that activate after a number of shots. And again, you have to actually launch your shots off in directions. Um, and so you get a lot of customization in how you want to do that. Now, I have to tell you that the first character that you get is a melee fighter specifically. And the melee fighter is fine, but you have to get up close and personal with it. And I found myself getting kind of bored with the game when that was the case. But my goodness, 
Death Must Die seemed to know that I was going to get a little bit bored and tedious of this, because almost as soon as I really started to feel like I wanted to piece out of the game, they introduce a new character. Because this is not the only person who has been called to stop death itself. And so now you get this sorceress, and she has long-range magical abilities. Whole new set of skills. And you can use her instead. Now you get to choose between different characters. And you even get to choose between different perks as you go. So that's really neat. And this this keeps going for a while. And you keep wanting to do one more run after you die. And see, well, maybe this works. Maybe this works. And it does the same basic thing. The same terrible, terrible game loop that you get into with Vampire Survivors that you just can't stop playing. But you do it in more of a framework of of the look and the feel and the aesthetics of a Hades. It is sort of pixel graphics, but it does definitely feel like it's borrowing in terms of theme and story from Hades, even though it looks significantly different from it. But the gameplay is probably going to remind people, especially the layout of these just big open arenas, is probably going to remind people of Vampire Survivors. And if you got very excited by me saying those two games, then you're probably going to really like Death Must Die. Um, The demo is actually pretty long. I actually don't know where the end of it is. I've played hours of it and haven't hit the end point. So go download it, try it out yourself, see if you like it. I, I mean, it worked for me. And finally, we get to Paleo Pines. Paleo Pines is the kind of game that seems purpose-made for me, because it's a farming sim in the same vein as a Stardew Valley or a Rune Factory. But there's a twist. This has dinosaurs in it. That's right, dinosaurs. You get to domesticate dinosaurs and put them on your ranch. That's a thing you get to do in this game. You interact with a bunch of people that live in this place where there are just dinosaurs roaming around all over the place, and you get to befriend them, and then you take them back and you create their environments, and then when they get to be your helpers, they get to do special skills for you, which is pretty great. Like, for instance, you and your little piddly human arms can't really you know, destroy all of the rocks and the debris on your farm. But I got good news for you. Your handy little friend Lucky here, oh, he can smash that stuff up no problem. He even has his own stamina meter. When you unlock uh, one of the other dinosaurs in the game, you realize that their special ability is that they can spray water. And that's really useful if you want to water a ton of crops. So you can ride your dinosaur over to the pond, and then you can use the dinosaur to just spray water all over your crops, and then you've saved yourself a lot of time and a lot of stamina. Each one of these dinosaurs has its own stamina meter, and so when it runs out, they can't really do these actions anymore, but you start to realize that befriending more of these dinosaurs who can do more things like smash up logs or giant boulders and stuff will not only allow you to access more of your farm to do more stuff, but also has the added benefit of unlocking special areas of the entire map that are closed off because of boulders, etc. There is some trial and error involved, but I think that it might just have been that I didn't seem to be paying as much attention to the tutorial parts that pop up frequently as I probably should have. But, like, the process that they try to go through for different elements is kind of interesting. One of the things that's different here than in, like, a Stardew Valley is that there's different kinds of soil that you can prepare with different kinds of fertilizer. So it could be, like, soft or sticky, and there's certain plants that do really well in those soils and some that will just die. They just don't like them. So you've got to be aware of that when you're putting down different kinds of fertilizer. And I did have to go back and like look up some help guides on how I'm supposed to befriend dinosaurs because they give you this tutorial and they're teaching you about the flute. 
you get a flute in this game, by the way. And the flute uh, has has the ability to make several different tones at different lengths. And different dinosaurs have have different friend calls, so you have to match you have to match their call to befriend them, and then calm them down or give them food so that they're you know hitting the sweet spot on this little friendometer or whatever you want to call it. And then I was like, well, okay, I've done that. This is great. Can I just befriend them? And no, no, I can't. And I had to remember what it was. And and that's when you realize, oh, there's there's a specific thing that you can get that I kept selling off because I didn't think I needed it that you need to hand to them. These like crunchy rolls or whatever. So I hand this to my uh, Stracosaurus which it looks a little like a triceratops, but it, it's got the hood with the little tiny spikes. I give it <laughs> to the dinosaur and they they don't like it because it's not the right kind of like sticky bun treat that they like. They they want something that's apparently a moist one. So you go on a little quest to find out that and then you get the, the right kind of thing so you can go back to befriend them. So there's this whole like rock, paper, scissors thing that they're setting up with both soil qualities and treat qualities. And you you kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error for a lot of this. You also get a journal so you can record all of the different flora and fauna in this world uh, I think the big problem that I had is that you do run out of stamina pretty quickly, especially in the early game when you're trying to set up planting. And because of that, and because they kind of assume that you're going to be riding your dinosaurs all over the place to get places faster, the landscape is very open. And so if you run out of stamina, and even your dinosaurs will run out of stamina because it takes quite a bit for them to, you know clear the land on your farm, you're kind of more at a brisk pace through this landscape the entire time. And that takes that takes time to to go through. And um, considering that everybody's on a schedule and they move around, this can get a little bit frustrating. Also, the quests that you get, the little side quests, can be a little confusing. They'll tell you about how there's this missing that watch or something that's around this bridge and it's not very obvious where it is you kind of have to really search around until you get a prompt to investigate something <laughs> that might be in the underbrush and it could take a while it it's not very simple to just say oh there's like a little glinting spot or this looks out of place and go and and get the uh, lost artifacts so that you can get some money. Money is also really scarce, especially in the early game, um, and it's really easy to utilize without being able to get all the seeds that you might want to get. So you just have to be mindful of that, especially up at the front, and they're a little stingy with it for rewards as well. I can't really complain about that because it is kind of a cozy game. It's supposed to be pretty relaxing. It's not like you're on any real time limits. It's not like you go through so many days and the game is over. You can play for as long as you want, I'm sure. The demo itself is very long. I don't even know where the end of this one is for the demo, but I can tell you that I've played for like six hours or something, and I'm still in the demo. So it's it's lengthy, and uh, I would definitely say that if you like any kind of farming sims or farming games or dinosaurs in general, you should probably check out the demo. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun, it's very cartoonish, it's very cute, and it has dinosaurs in it. So that's just a win-win-win all around. Okay, so that has been uh, a lot of demos, and I've probably played more of them, but those are the four that I wanted to discuss. Uh, if you do have any demos that you've played recently that you want to tell me about, I mean, you can. You, you could leave a comment. I don't know if I'm going to read it, but you could leave one. Anyway, I'm going to go see what other demos are on Steam right now. Ooh, these all look fun. But they're not actually demos. Why is it that these keep saying that they're demos, but I can't play them? That's not... That's not making me feel good vibes here. Um, okay, maybe a while before I do another demo. <laughs> I actually have to have demos to play. Um, wait, where are you going? I'm still looking... Maybe I'll find something interesting. 